thank you all for sticking around for the last session of the day. So I do appreciate you uh, doing that and being here. Um, I'm Julie Stevens with RMS Tech Spa out of Charlotte. And um, in my company, we take the stress out of tech. So that's our motto. And I, I do help with um, words or websites and um, help folks with social media, uh, do technical training, that kind of stuff. So I'm always uh, busy learning something new to uh, be able to help my clients with that. So I want to just start by explaining what my WordCamp why is. I, and I added this because of the sessions that I've gone to um, for myself at WordCamps, I've always wanted to hear this um, when presenters are presenting. So I, I found this graphic and I thought it was super cool to explain uh, why I love being here. And so we've got the brain here, which all our brains at this point are enormous. I'm sure. Um, and so I'm here to fill my brain, but I'm also here to fill my heart. Um, I've been in sessions uh, the last couple of days that have actually brought tears to my eyes from stories that people have told. I've met wonderful people here, and thank you for some of you that I've met um, in the last couple of days that are here today. Um, so my heart is also very full when I leave here. And then those two things together, create those ideas. And so when I walk away, I uh, hopefully will take something that I learned here and transform it um, into something I can use for myself or for my business. So I hope that you all have similar feelings um, as well. I do want to mention, now that we're truly officially started, that at the top I do have a uh, Google link and um, I have questions on my screen that will pop up. So if you have questions along the way, and uh, want to type them in there, you're welcome to, or throw your hand up in the air. Either way, very, you know, you don't have to wait till the end. If something sparks in your brain, go ahead and ask me. So, just a little bit about me. Here are some photos. Um, I, the, you've got a picture there in the middle of me and my husband. We uh, did a <coughs> surprise wedding two years ago and surprised all of the people in attendance with that wedding, so that's why we're pushing there in our picture, so that was super cool. Um, I love the lake. I have a little place on Lake Tillery, and that's where I spend most of my weekends. I've got a Harley, I like riding motorcycles as well. And then down here at the left are my two daughters. That's us in Costa Rica. We, none of us had, um, had a drink out of a uh, coconut before, so we had to drink true coconut water out of a coconut, and they thought it was the coolest thing ever. So um, that's just a little bit about me. One other thing to note that I forgot to mention, all of my slides are on the um, WordCamp Asheville website. So if you want to access some of these slides, um, they are there linked. And then this brings me to my real love of my life, which is food. Okay, <laughs> The picture up at the top left is uh, from, I've been talking about it to about everybody I'm, I've met so far uh, at Biscuit Head. Anyone eating at Biscuit Head in Asheville? <gasps> Fantastic. So I went there yesterday to get my fix, but uh, super good food. But this is part of my hobby too. And as, as it relates to Google, I am a Google local guide. So I loved in my spare time to go try new restaurants and um, do the Google reviews. So it's kind of my way of being a food critic without all the hassle of being one. I just get to do it for fun. <laughs> so uh, that's something that I enjoy doing. All right. So let's talk about Google. And, and what I want to talk about in this uh, talk today is G Suite specifically. And I'm going to go over several uh, examples of how I use G Suite in my business, some ways of how I use G Suite personally, and um, hopefully give you some great ideas. First of all, how many of you are G Suite users now? Fantastic. How many of you would consider yourself a G Suite beginner? Wonderful. I love that. Okay. So these are some of the things that are available in G Suite. That would be your Gmail, which for most people, when they sign up for G Suite, that's what they're wanting is they, they want the email system. We're also going to talk about things like the calendar, Google Voice, um, and Google Drive is a huge piece of that. These are not 
G Suite is not limited to this. I could talk all day about G Suite, and to be honest with you, each one of these slides that I'm going to go through, I could do a whole talk just on that one slide. <laughs> so um, it's, 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 it has so many great tools and so many great features. Um, I'm just touching on a few of them real quick today and giving you some ideas of how to use them. All right. So Google Chrome is the first thing that I want to mention. Um, how many of you are fairly strictly Google Chrome users? Okay, fantastic. So one of the things that I want to mention here is that you do have extensions and you can go to the Chrome Web Store to look at those extensions. And I, if you haven't done that, I'm sure you have to some extent, but I try to go through every once in a while and just uh, take a note of new extensions that may be out there specifically for productivity and that kind of stuff. So, um, let me see. I lost my screen. Hold on. Um, oh, it's up here. That's why. Um, you can see up there at the top that I have a few extensions uh, loaded up there. One of the newest ones I found, and I learned about it at uh, working at Brawley, was uh, Loom. Do you all, any of you use Loom? It's a fantastic tool for recording steps that you might do. So I do a lot of training, whether it be online for my clients or in person, or I might just be working with someone and they need a step-by-step -step guide of how to get through something. I use that to create that really quickly. It is awesome, awesome, awesome. So uh, that was a nice little tip. But that's just one of them that's up there. Uh, Todoist is another one that I love to use. And a lot of these work with the Google Suite, okay? Todoist especially. It will um, embed your Todoist um, items of things that you need to do right there on your Gmail screen, which is handy. And it will also allow you to um, send an email right to your to-do list, which is great, and it'll link back to that email when you need to go back and do that action item. All right. So I encourage you to look through those extensions if you haven't already. The other thing that I want to mention is to save your profiles. So if we go right here up at the top of our Google Chrome experience, we can click on this button and you'll see these are all my different, these are my, my husband and my kids and whatnot and various other things that I have. But I encourage you to go to uh, manage people. Have you guys done this before for different Chrome experience? So it will allow you to create new people within Chrome, okay? I've run into several folks that have used this. Um, that's my daughter with a margarita glass. What on earth? Uh, but um, I've, I've run into a lot of folks that will just log in as another instance in Chrome. They'll, uh, I shouldn't say another instance, but a, another user in that same Chrome window, and it causes a lot of conflicts. So if you're logged into two Gmail accounts in one browser window, it, it freaks out the world. So be careful with that. I would highly... I highly encourage you to create a new profile instead that allows you to have a login to everything brand new just for you. So for example, when my daughter logs in to Chrome, she goes and clicks on her little Chrome person and everything that she uses, whether that be her Google Suite experience, whether it be Facebook, whether it be whatever, her Todoist, whatever, she's logged into that herself it saves that entire experience for her if she went to the bahamas and logged in on a hotel computer in the bahamas all of her stuff would pop up there her bookmarks her login information everything because she logged into that one chrome experience so i encourage people if you're not using that use it because it's fantastic the other thing that i want to mention is incognito mode and the way that you get to incognito mode is up here at the top three dots in your experience, you have a new incognito window. When you go into that, what it's going to do is it'll kind of, um, it'll change and everything will be like a light gray color, but you're just in a brand new window of Chrome. It's not logging your cookies. It's not logging your history. So if you wanna go to some of those websites that maybe you don't want your, um, history or cookies or whatever to be tracked, um, it's great for that. It's also great 
if you it's a quick and easy way to get someone else to use your Chrome experience and not mess with the data that's in there and not um, and, and when you close the incognito window anything that you've been logged into will log you out instantly so I like to use it for that for a, a lot of reasons for that as well okay um, let's see where we are I think mouse died go ahead yes Mm -hmm. If you have two Google, well, I've had an old email and um, I deleted it. Mm -hmm. Do you still have that profile on Google In the same window or as a separate window? Okay, yeah, and it's kind of funky and weird to get rid of, but if you'll, it, I'll, I'll see you afterwards and help you get rid of that, yeah. It is a little weird once you get them kind of stuck in there, it's, you have to go find the place to remove them, but I can help you with that, yes. Okay, yes. Because mm -hmm. I have one for my business, mm -hmm. and I have one for my contract for marketing, right. and all the emails come through that. So mm -hmm. I kind of have them all over at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you said that that would make Chrome act funky. In what way? I have to Unless you create the new user profile. So this, this, if you go up to the top and click on your person, and see I've got all these different people. Okay, so if I need to flip between um, my different lives, so here's Scout with Julie, that's my wine business where I sell wine. So I don't want that mixed up with my other stuff, so I created a whole separate profile. So when I want to go to that one, I click on it, it opens up a whole new, brand new Chrome window, and everything is separate. My logins, everything is there. And so then I can just switch back and forth using this little picture up here to, RMS Tech Spa, Julie, and Wine, Julie, back and forth. When I do it, I click. If I want, for some reason, to go to a different user, I can unlock it. Mm -hmm. I think it usually goes to the first one, the email can be logged in. Yes, when you, when you open it up, it'll go to the last one you earn. switch over to uh, in that panel, I can switch to the other profile. Yes. And then it'll switch everything to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. if you're if that's the way you're doing it yes that's the way that you should be doing it yeah there's a way that you can go to gmail and and log in an additional user in the same window that's when you start getting conflicts okay yeah okay all right so moving on Let's see where i am all right so the other thing is drive and this is a huge huge piece of Google Suite. Um, in Google Drive, you have um, documents, sheets, you've got slides, you have a form creator, um, you have drawings, which we'll talk about in a second. So you have all of these different really cool tools that are either free or um, cheap, depending on how you have signed up to use Google. Um, one of the things that I want to mention here, so if I go, let me do this, show you here. So I keep losing my mouse. All right, here we go. So if we're looking at the drive experience, we have over here on the left side um, some, your navigation essentially. So one of the things there that I think is important to mention is the shared with me. How many of you um, loathe looking at the shared with me. <laughs> okay, don't be scared. <laughs> um, shared with me is one of the biggest complaints that I get is what is this place? I can't organize it. It's all crazy and, and it's a mess. I tell people, don't worry about shared with me. Just let it be there in its own little land because those are all the documents that someone has shared with you so that you can edit, collaborate, work with them, view it, whatever it may be. It's just something that it's just a place to keep it all in one little spot. 
You're not going to organize it. You're not going to keep track of it. It's always going to be a mess because the more people that share stuff with you, it's going to keep updating that particular place. But here's what you need to know about Share With Me that if you're not using it, will change your life. If you're constantly going to a document because someone shared it with you, and maybe it's something you use weekly, maybe it's something that your assistant created and shared with you or your partner or whatever, don't leave it in shared with me. If you go up to the top of the screen, there's a little button that says add to drive. Okay? So if it's in shared with me and if it's something that you use, go ahead and add it to your drive. Okay? That's going to put it under my drive up here at the top left. And then it's in your land. And if you want to put it in a folder or you want to move it around and put it where you want to put it, then no problem. Okay? So you can do that. Um, so don't worry about share with me. Don't try to organize it. Just use it as it is. The other thing I want to mention is um, the search. I have found that a lot of folks don't use the power and awesomeness of Google search. So over here, if you're in Drive and you drop down this little secret arrow that Google loves to um, put on their products, if you drop that down, you'll see you have an option here to uh, change your search terms, look for that document. So I have several um, experiences where um, folks have come to me and said, I lost that document. I don't know where it is. I know it's, it's, it's gone. I said, well, it's, it's not gone. You just don't have it organized right. And so you can come in here and search. So I don't always put things in folders myself. I'm not a super organized person like that because I know that I can go in here and use the power of the awesome Google search bar and be able to find that uh, particular document that I may be looking for. So use that to help you, okay? The other thing here that I wanna talk about in Google Drive is folders. And if we're looking here and we're creating folders, one of the ways that I use this with my clients, um, I do create client folders because I keep everything um, organized for my clients in, in their own special folder. Um, if I'm, let's just say I'm working with, well, let me, say, let me tell you this. If I get a new client, the very first thing I do is I go in here into my client folder, I create one with their name, I put a document in there with information on them, whether it be their contact information, whatever, because I know it's all gonna be right there, okay? Um, if I'm gonna do a website for them, and I know that they are okay with using Google folders themselves, I'll create a folder structure for them and share that folder with the client Okay? And I'll do different pages or different um, documents for each page of their website. And we'll kind of work together with making sure that the content is set up so that they can see what's in there. They can add some stuff themselves and we collaborate together to make that happen. I'll create a folder within their website folder structure there that they can add all the photos that they might have that they want to add to their website and things like that. So it, it's kind of cool if you have a client that's comfortable with that. Not everybody is, but if you do, it's, it's a really cool way to um, work with those folks and make sure that everybody's on the same page, especially if you're working from a distance and you don't get to sit down with them and, and work on things. You guys can see the same things at the same time. All right. Um, the other thing is revision history. Um, and I think I forgot to add that, but let's just talk about revision history for a minute. If we are in a document, and I'm mad at myself right now because I forgot to pull this up. No, I can do it, I can do it, hold on. Do y'all use revision history? Huh? No? Oh, well then I definitely need to do it. All right, so let me do this here. And find my guy. That's not it. Well, I'm gonna have to show you later. Once I get to my person. Here we go. Here we go. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it up. All right, let me tell you about it. So the document that I wanted to show you is um, 
this is a personal document, but, but kind of a fun way to kind of make sense to everybody. We have a uh, Friendsgiving at my house every year. So every year for Friendsgiving, I create a Google document, okay? And I send it out to everyone and it's on a public, you know, anybody can edit it within Google. You don't have to have a login or anything. Just as long as you have the link, you can get to it. So um, everybody goes in and they write, oh, I'm Julie and I'm gonna bring mashed potatoes. I'm Sally and I'm gonna bring green beans, whatever it may be, and they fill out the little Google document and put their information in there. Well, I can go back and um, go under the file menu and click on view revision history, okay? And when I do that, it's going to break down that document by time, by date, and by user and show me exactly who has edited that document, when they edited it, what they edited. So if they took something out, it'll cross through it and it'll put a color code on that cross through to show, oh, that was Sally, and we have determined we're gonna make all of Sally's revisions pink. Okay, so anything that I'm looking in that document over the course of time, I can tell Sally made that change. So here's another really cool way that I use that. I worked with my attorney to create my website um, contract. And I already had one thanks to an awesome uh, WordPress friend that I met, um, had given me their contract that they had been using. And so I worked with my attorney to kind of look at his and, and make some changes and adjustments and we used Google Documents to do it. So um, my attorney would go in and, and um, take things out, add things, and then I would go in and double check and I'd be like, okay, yep, I'm cool with that. And then I would say, okay, I wanna add this and I'd type in a little blurb that I might want. Attorney would go in, he would look at it and he would um, make those uh, changes and approve it or say, eh, yeah, I don't like that. So um, that revision history was really cool because we did that over the course of a couple weeks and I could go back if I wanted to look and see, oh, why did we take that out? I can go back and look at comments and all that kind of stuff. So the revision history um, is super cool. I'm sorry I didn't get to demo it. Uh, the other thing about um, Google Drive that can be super cool too is um, talk to text. So if you are, if you are, um, using, let me do this, I don't, I don't know why I'm having such issues here. Here we go. If you are using um, a Google document, I like to use talk to text for um, brainstorming. So if I open this document and I go to tools and then voice typing, You'll see it pops up here. I can click to speak, and then as I am talking, it should be typing what I say. And it's actually pretty fantastic at getting everything correct. And I can say things like period, new paragraph, and it will go ahead and continue typing. I will pull this up sometimes if I'm driving around and I have crazy ideas in my head and I wanna get them out. Um, I'll use this tool to, uh, for that. I'll also use this to, um, I'll turn on bulleting, and I'll be like, blah, 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 and I'll hit enter, blah, 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 and I'll just, I'll end up having this whole really cool thing um, of a brainstorming document once I get done. So I really like using that uh, talk to text. So, any questions so far? Yeah. Go ahead. There are, I don't think it's built in yet, but I have, there are extensions that will do that for you. If you add an extension to Chrome, um, and I can't think of off the top of my head the one that I've used before. Anybody know it? No? I can look at, I can look it up later and, and tell you what that is. But yes, that, those options are out there with extensions. I don't think it's built in yet though to drive. Okay. All right, so the weird thing is, is this, um, 
There we go. That's one way to fix it. Um, all right, so uh, the other thing that I want to mention is add-ons. If you go into Google Documents, Google Sheets, Google Slides, whatever it may be, um, if within the Google Drive suite, there's a button to click for add-ons, and it's essentially a Google Chrome Web Store just for that particular tool. So for example, one that I like to use in Google Sheets is one called Autocrat. And Autocrat will allow you to use uh, the magic of Google Forms and Google Sheets together. And so when someone fills out a Google Form and the data goes into the Google Sheet, it will email you a beautiful Google document that's editable of the uh, data that the people have filled out in that form. So it's, it's really nice um, for gathering information from a client. If you wanted to send them a Google form, they fill out the information that you want from them. And then you use Autocrat to send you a beautiful document that then you can put in their client folder. Okay? But it's also saved in a spreadsheet so you can organize it and, and filter out and, and things like that of all your clients at one time. So that's kind of a cool one, just as a side note. All right, so I encourage you, if you have not yet, to look at the add-ons inside of each one of those things because there are a ton of them. And a lot of them are purchase things that perhaps you already purchase, um, and it integrates somehow into slides or sheets or docs. It could be another program that you already own um, that will work well together.